Hey guys, I'm Shaft of the Clinic Casting Crew. I have a mouthful of crackers. Hold on. Okay, and uh, this is Base Wars Qualifiers. This is game one of a best of three semifinals. Zerg for Sharon on Frost Ladder Edition. My co caster tonight is Carson Tyrannus Woods, and it would be his honor to do the player introductions. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so in the top right side, we have KLG Sector. Um, it looks like he's going for a standard barracks timing. And in the bottom left-hand side, we have the Red Zerg, Jim Rising. Uh, it's going to be a team kill match in the semifinals, and it looks as though it's only KLG members left in the tournament. So Yeah, that KLG. I mentioned earlier that this team was a powerhouse in this tournament, and uh, yet again, they're fielding three uh, players, um, and one of them guaranteed a spot in the finals, these two fighting for another spot. So no matter what, KLG is going to lose two matches in the next two games, but they're still going to win the tournament. Yep, and uh, it should be really interesting because if they practice together like um, normal teammates do, uh, there should be a lot of mind games going on, so we'll have to watch out for some of that. Absolutely, and Jim Rising, of course, one player known for his unorthodox strategies. Um, one thing I've noticed him doing a lot in... Uh, Zerg vs. Terran lately, he's got two main builds. One where he goes for oh, like a 12 roach attack in the going in the very early stages in the game, and one where he gets a quick overlord speed instead of a uh, ling speed, and he just does a lot of scouting. He favors that one on bigger maps like Frost, so that's where I'm leaning towards, and uh, he'll get a layer before he gets the metabolic boost if he does do that strategy. Yeah, he does have the gas on the way, um, which would be a normal timing for speed, but you may be right in the Overlord speed timing as well, so we'll have to see which one he goes for in yeah. this game. And, uh, yeah, so it's uh, just shaping up pretty normally. He is queuing up uh, Queens immediately, um, so that's going to miss his meta or his uh, timing for Overlord speed. So this looks like it could be Roaches instead. Yeah, if it, uh, he's definitely not going for speed with that at this point, so if it is not um, the Overlord speed like you suggested, it will most definitely be Roaches. Um, he, uh, I don't know how I feel about Roaches on this map, especially in cross position though, mm -hmm. uh, which he should know at this point, um, because just of such a long rush distance and there will be no um, Roach speed to help him out, so... Well, he does queue up Ling Speed. That seems way late for Ling Speed. Yeah, he may have just been um, making sure which position he was in, because his strategy may have differed had he been vertical or uh, horizontal spawn to his opponent. Okay. That's probably the reason he delayed it so long. Well, Jim does have a slight worker lead here, This expected in this moment in the game. But there are two command centers being produced now for Sector. So he's going for that greedy three base play. This is Frost Ladder Edition. So greed is kind of the name of the game, especially in these cross spawn spots. But Jim has no third base. Uh, yeah, Jim is actually delaying his third base like we saw earlier on when he played that Protoss on Heavy Rain. Mm -hmm. uh, and he definitely had a very specific build um, for that player. So it may be the same uh, with Sector as well. You would expect that, especially with them being teammates. Yep. And uh, he's going for the standard Hellions. Uh, these Zling Speed should be able to delay any sort of Hellion pressure that would normally be uh, really annoying. But once he gets up to about six Hellions, um, he should be able to kite very well. So wouldn't we've be got, too big. No. We've got Stem on the way at this point. So stem definitely a clutch uh technology in this matchup uh usually you see this a little bit later this seems slightly early are you expecting like an eight maybe nine minute timing attack here as opposed to the 11 to 13 minute one um no i'm i'm expecting the same uh normal timing attack he may just have combat shields with it because mm -hmm. typically with the nine minute timing attacks you don't get a third base and instead you get the barracks but um he could possibly be doing that if he just saves up his Hellions. I've seen Hellion Marine attacks that push out uh, a little bit earlier and, while still getting that third base. They're pretty powerful, but also pretty easy to shut down if scouted. All right. Well, we got the Roach Warren finishing up now and an Evolution Chamber to boot. Uh, hmm. Plus one. Okay, so he's getting plus one range despite his opponent going Bio-style. Typically, this is 
what you'd see against Matt. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting because he notices, not only does he notice that the Terran player is going bio, but he also is only working off of one Evo chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, so this leads me to believe that it won't be, um, it'll be like a faster version of the 1-1 timing, except with a lot more roaches. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see if he substitutes in Burrow or some other um, upgrade, or if he just is content with getting a few more roaches with his attack uh, and skipping that plus one carapace altogether for now. Well, the Roaches are going to do very well defensively against the Hellions. Re Hellions always follow a Reaper expand, so he's basically just going to shut that down out the gate, and it's allowing him to drone, uh, mix in drones with the Roaches. Uh, do you think that the Roaches could just be his way of defending the Hellions in the mid game, very uh, larva uh, efficiently, and allowing him to get more drones out, where he might have had to do a lot more lings otherwise? Uh, Roach Roaches are definitely the most larva efficient way to deal with these Hellions, but he's making so many that mm -hmm. it wouldn't be larva efficient if they were just to defend against the Hellions. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, my guess is that he's going to push out about right now and hit when Roach Speed finishes in plus one. Okay. Well, it uh, looks like you have called it perfectly. We've got 22 Roaches on the field at the moment, and they are slowly lurching forward. Glio Reconstitution going to kick in, give them a little whiplash. And yep, and he, they do catch some of those Hellions off guard in the middle of the map, and Hellions do look like they're going in for a counterattack to try and roast some drones, but he's actually not hawking the eggs, so he will have Roaches in position to deal with these Hellions, no problem. And when you say he's not hawking the eggs, you mean he's not adding the eggs to his currently existing army? Yeah, he's uh, got these uh, Roaches here, so he didn't have to deselect them, he's just using the rally points that are given by the hatchery. Awesome. Rather than well, here we go. We've got the Roaches showing up here in the natural. And the SCV is being pulled offline to help uh, keep the glass cannon units, the Marines, uh, alive a little bit longer. SCVs uh, losing a lot of them, though. Shift L shows us 18 workers have been killed so far. These Roaches have completely paid for themselves. Yeah, they might even end the game right here, uh, unless he kind of overcommits with them. But they've definitely played for themselves, clearing out his natural mineral line, mm -hmm. continuing to rack up at, uh, SCV kills up to 31. We actually saw Jim using this build um, in game number uh, two, uh, one and two of uh, the finals of our last Space Force qualifier number six. He was up against his teammate Maker, who seemed to know something that we all uh, did not. Maker dropped down to three SCVs with Jim Rising taking no losses on his own uh, drone line, and still came back and won the game on the back of mules alone. Really? That's insane. Uh, and he hopefully... did it twice. Really? Yes. <laughs> with how, losing how many SCVs? He was down to three SCVs in one game. The other game was similar, but I don't know the exact number. That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, so... Jim not actually doing as much damage as I've seen in the past, and uh, his opponent, you know, held that very well so i'm wondering you know how much did jim rising put into that attack and how far behind is he uh he is up to 63 drones which is a pretty good number he's got plus two attack on the way and hydra's out mm -hmm. with the hydra range on the way uh so he should be safe against any attack that um sector tries to put on him but i don't think he'll be able to be aggressive for a couple minutes until um his plus two attack is done so this is different than your wing bling muta composition. Can you tell us the pros and cons of Roach Hydra against Baya? Um, well, Ling, uh, Roach Hydra is definitely more efficient, but mm -hmm. it's really weak against things like drops, um, which the Mutaling uh, Baneling is really, really good against because mm -hmm. you just shut down the drops with your Mutalists. Uh, but you need definitely need a lot of static D if you're playing against a big dropping player. And you also need... Um, uh, good concaves. Well, when you're playing with Mutaling Bane, all you, that you need to do is split well and avoid Widowmine hits. All right. Well, this is turning into a super macarine. You kind of expect that on this uh, particular map in these positions. I love the overload spread as a result of that from Jim Rising. He's going to spot any drops coming a long ways off. Yeah, he's got ex excellent overload spread uh, around the entire map, basically. He sees all the army movement from uh, Sector and knows that he's not being threatened with drops whatsoever. In fact, if you click V on one of Jim Rising's units, you can see his uh, map awareness. Like, that is insane. Yeah, he's got complete map awareness and he doesn't even hold the forward watchtower. It's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty incredible. 
So I just noticed, Drew, uh, in the on the stream, you uh, had the instant replay of that big battle with SEVs. That is amazing. Now we do have another big battle, Roach Hydra. Uh, the tanks are in position, though. The Hydra's going to take a lot of damage, as well as the Roaches from this. This is a huge, costly engagement for Jim Rising. He's got to break the back of the second one, because these Marines are actually really cheap. Yeah, that was actually not the best engagement for Jim Rising there. I feel like if he had an Overseer, he probably could have pushed in and won, uh, being able to spot those high ground tanks. But um, with having no high ground vision, he basically just ate a bunch of tank shots and traded kind of inefficiently. Mm -hmm. But he's not in too bad of a position. Right. He's, uh, he lost. he's a very aggressive player, and he's maxed. Like, he's maxed. His opponent has half the army supply of him. Yeah, that is actually a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. He's got, uh, it looks like he's going to push in here, and I don't think the tanks will be able to do much about it um, until they start firing upon those Hydras. The light Hydras will take a lot of damage from those tanks, and that should be Jim Rising's biggest fear right now. Well, this is huge. Jim actually able to walk through the depot wall. The wall was left down, and now he's got a great uh, concave uh, here on the orbital command. It's going to zone the Marines out, and the tanks are not able to fire on the Hydras in this position. I'm not 100% sure about committing in there like that because he's going to lose this entire army and yeah, he did kill that uh, CC, well, but... He was God, maxed, he's... and look at yeah, this bank. Is... Yeah, that is true. He does have a gigantic bank, so it looks like it's almost no problem for him, and you're right, <laughs> GG. Um, I was a little bit more concerned, but he's actually on five bases behind that, so... Yeah, it seems like, you know, despite all the aggression, you know, he was always ahead on the unit's loss tab. He also somehow managed to uh expand behind all this aggression you know if he was staying on roach hydra three base he would have had nowhere to go but i feel like you know he wasn't making roaches or hydras behind that attack he was using the units he had and banking all the rest of his resources it seemed like he was about to hit a big tech switch yeah he was definitely preparing um whether to remax or something i think he smelt blood in the water and was like oh i can definitely kill him here so he just went for it um knowing i'm on five bases he's trying to get his third with half the workers i do and half the army supply i can trade in efficiently and still come out ahead so yeah that's what he did he, he did a great job of it jim always a very aggressive player something that uh you know no one can ever take away from him he always does these unorthodox styles that end up in his opponent laying on the ground, dying in a pool of blood. <laughs> That's, uh, I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> um, he, he's one of my favorite Zergs to watch, in fact. Um, you know, he's not one of those players that are like have big names like Scarlet yet, but he's making a name for himself and that's really all you can ask for and he's doing it on his terms actually Scott I don't mean to put you on the spot here but do you mind turning your camera on or your uh not your camera I'm sorry your mic on hello what's up guys um so Scott he's our observer streamer uh he's done a great job so far but one thing that Scott and I have talked about extensively is the lack of an organic structure in StarCraft where you know you can make your own strategies and make them work effectively Scott Jim Rising is a player who does that, so I just want to say booyah, and do you have any retort? I, I do. <laughs> While we're not in the next match yet, they haven't set up the lobby, I'll uh, comment a little bit. Now, um, this is the only way I could conceive of it, I'm sure there's other ways, it's just the first way I've thought of off the top of my head here, but um, you are kind of forced to do what the metagame dictates as, you know, the pat balance patches come out, and then Hydra comes more viable, or or now we're using Swarm Host because they're in the game, or uh, Mutas over Corruptors just because they're faster, more mobile, even though Corruptors would be a better choice otherwise, and all this other stuff that you just have to go for what works um, mm -hmm. in the meta games. Now, this is what I think is where you get to have fun. This is how I would see it. I would play the meta game as I need to, maybe try to attain some sort of advantage, like if I get a successful um, attack on the enemy's worker line and I take out 10 of his workers, that gives me the opening to do whatever I'd like to do that's not necessarily fun and chaos, but just my preferred style, which which translates into fun, being able to do the style that you're better with naturally or you love to do. So, um, you know, let's say I love opening, say, with the Banshee, but it's not always viable because I'm not good at it yet, or even if I'm great with it. Uh, that 1-1-1 one, one, one with the, the Terran, it puts you at risk uh, initially, especially if the enemy sees you doing the 1-1-1. One, one, one. You got very low army count. But mm -hmm. if I can, if I can pressure him before doing that, or in the middle of that somehow, if I can just get ahead 
then mm -hmm. that opens up the opportunity to not have to play as standard. You can just choose your preferred playstyle and just wreck the opponent any way you like instead of having to go with the perfect meta. Hey, fair enough, man. Fair enough. And how does uh, how does Jim Rising you know fit into your your little style there? Uh, he <laughs> he goes so fast. I think it's hard for me to detect that myself. Um, <laughs> I see him go with with these uh, um, plays that I can't even be descriptive right now. I have to be vague because it's a blur. He'll I, I, don't, I don't have the words right now. I'm sorry. He, he's just that, that good with me. All these guys are so beyond what I'm used to watching, except in WCS, of course, that it's like no matter what play style they do, um, they really capitalize. And it makes the other player look like they're not doing well or they're fumbling, even though they're doing great. Um, it just it snowballs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, guys, I gotta run to the washroom real quick. I will be right back. Feel free to stay on the air, Drew, until I come back. For sure, sure. I have a tendency to be very verbose without being as descriptive as I could be when I'm not able to look into what uh, the players are doing here, but I am trying to get there. This is actually uh, one of my uh, first opportunities, actually, actually the first opportunity to do any screencasting or co-casting for Masters Level Play. So two weeks ago uh, with Base Wars number five, that was my first real opportunity to do that, and uh, it's a slow learning process for me so far. Um, I should know better because I watched WCS and IEM, but wa watching it live firsthand uh, and doing the camera control at the same time, it's a bit of a blur. So um, that's that for me. Uh, Carson, what do you think? Uh, I was going to say I have the same problem. Sometimes I don't know what words to say, so I stutter and um, try to put together the perfect sentence, but I right. <laughs> don't always get there and I end up looking like an idiot. So That's all right, it's all right. Looks like there's still no lobby yet. Mr. Squeaky Chair is back. Welcome back. Thank you. All right, so the lobby looks like it just got hosted up. We are back, folks. A big thank you to everyone who is still with us since the beginning of this broadcast and also from the previous weeks. We do appreciate you guys checking it out and seeing how uh, this Base Wars event turns out. Yeah, if you like this content, please check us out. Uh, on my YouTube, Drew will link you to the uh, the, the YouTube there, but uh, it's youtube.com slash misused shaft. We have a lot of educational content, like our episodes of Crash Course. Um, in fact, we've got a new episode coming out uh, on Monday um, that will be on Zerg vs. Protoss, in fact, and that's uh, going to be taught by Lukoda, who used to play for Love Your Girlfriend, a uh, very strong Zerg player. Um, Carson, are you familiar with the name? Lakota? Um, I have not heard of him. Okay. Um, no, I've not heard of him. Yeah, well, uh, he's actually a really strong Zerg. He's going to be teaching us a swarm hostless Zerg vs. Protoss, uh, and really uh, going into the details of when to like, mute attack switch. So you can check that out. We also have the Base Wars VODs if you missed any tonight, uh, or any matches, and you want to go back and watch them. Uh, they will be on my YouTube. We also have last week's VODs up there as well, as well as uh, entertaining casts uh, you know, from different events. We'll do some rebroadcasts. Uh, some broadcasts from replays, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, go, go give it a shot, um, no doubt. Uh, and we also do things like uh, Pokemon Black Let's Plays and Super Mario 64, all kinds of stuff like that. Oh yeah. All right. And it looks oh. like, so Carson, you're basically gonna be able to finish up the semifinal, is that right? Uh, yeah, and maybe do one or two games of the finals, depending on what you want. I don't know if you want me to start it and then not finish it, or if you'd rather do it all yourself or yeah. Kind of uh, well, we're gonna try and find a another co-caster in our little group chat. Can you check on that, Scott? All right. I'm sorry. I just got a dinner to go to, and I didn't good. think it would go this far. It's all good. Or, yeah, and I think I thought we were gonna start an hour ago, so I thought mm -hmm. we'd have some time, but. Mm -hmm. Bad. No, it's fine. That's why we got that uh, group together, just in case we had to do like guest casters or anything. We were prepared. <laughs>
Uh, do you mind individually messing, messaging the people as well? They don't usually check group chat. You can copy and paste it to them. All right, guys, we are in lobby. We're going to be on Daedalus Point this game. Looks like we've got everybody in here, so we should be getting started momentarily. We can go to the We Will Be Right Back screen or the advertisement if you want. Okay, guys, it looks like we were a little bit out of the loop. That was actually game number uh, two between Sector and Jim. So that is actually over with. Sector is eliminated. We are moving on to our finals now between the amazing Jim Rising and his opponent. I won't reveal it. You might not have been paying attention. Find out in a moment. We will be right back.